How's it going, everybody? My name is MDKWLAN, otherwise known as MDK, and today we're going to actually go back into Arch Linux. Now, uh, a lot has changed since my initial guide, which I've made addendums to, and you can find them on my channel. But I'd rather just consolidate them, so this will be Arch Install Guide for October 1st of 2013. So, um, this isn't using, like, there's not, like, anything new right now, but this is just encompassing all the stuff that actually has changed, so, like, system D things and this time around I'm actually gonna go through and explain things a lot be better than I did before um, because I was under the assumption that people can actually use a, a, a CLI text editor and not have a problem with it um, but I'll go through and explain like intricate things like that and this time around we're actually going to be using grub rather than using syslinux and uh, Grub actually makes the whole process a lot easier, believe it or not. And you can do an Arch Linux build in less than 20 minutes. So, uh, I already have the virtual machine s uh, set up here. It's 4 gigabytes of RAM, 4 cores, and uh, you know max video memory. It's the same build as before. So let's hop right in it, shall we? So you want to grab the Arch Tool ISO off of you know Arch Linux's site. I'll put a link in the description of where you can get that. And uh, there's been certain changes changes to like System D for like DHCP settings, and um, it no longer uses ETH zero. It uses like ENP S zero three or you know things like that. And I did a rant video about System D before, and uh, my opinion has actually changed. System D is not nearly as evil as I thought it was but anyway we live we learn so since we're using grub this time around we actually actually we actually have to add a new partition I'm just gonna repeat myself screw it so we need to add a new partition and it's gonna be dev SDA and we're gonna call it grub and our grub partition is what's needed by grub and it's kinda a little funky and I'll get more into it once I make it here. So I'm going to use GDisk again, dev SDA. A lot of people will probably be using MBR rather than GPT, so by all means, use whatever you want. So at this window, we want to press N for a new partition. Um, so this is going to be our grub partition. It's going to be 32 megabytes big, and we're going to use ENF02. So this is our BIOS boot partition. So if you ever need to know what the hex codes are for any of these, this GUID hex codes or whatever you want to call them, press L and it'll list off. So you can see that EF00 is for EFI systems and like 8200 is reserved for swap and different things like that. So the rest of it is pretty much the same as it was in the last video. So I'm going to give one gig and that's going to be our BIOS boot partition. Uh, next one is going to be our swap, so I'm going to give that 4 gigabytes because it has 4 gigabytes of RAM, and you should do either mirror in case you need to do a full dump, but either way, it's 8200 for the Linux swap. Now we're going to do root, which is uh, 10 gigs. That's just going to be all that, and then we're going to grab all the free space. So if you press P, you can see all your partitions. So we have the BIOS bootable partition for grub. We have the regular boot partition, we have swap, we have root, and we have home. So, we're going to press W to write it, and Y to agree to it. Now that that's all done, what we're going to do is set up our file system types. Now, what we don't want to do is format the, grub, uh, the boot BIOS partition. We don't want to format that. That just stays as is. And technically, it's completely innocuous to your system. Your system is essentially agnostic to the whole idea of it existing so you do not format your dev sda1 if you're following along do not format that that's also another thing make sure it's your first partition of your block because if you don't grub won't find it grub is picky so what we want to do is we want to do make fs and i'm going to use extension 4 like i did in the previous video and we're going to do that for dev sda2 4 and 5 and then we're going to make our swap so make swap dev sda3 and may as well turn it on while we're here swap on dev sda3 
Now that that's all done, we want to mount all of our file systems uh, that we just created. So mount dev sda4 as mount. We're going to change into mount. And we're going to make two directories, boot and home. And we're going to mount them respectively. So dev sda2 is our boots, and dev sda5 is our home. And if at any time you actually screw this up, just press DF, and it'll list off all of the things that are currently mounted. Pay attention to the bottom ones. Ignore the top, because the top is just everything that's been loaded from the ISO. So you don't really want to pay any attention to that. So dev SDA4 is our mounting part. It's mounted to mount, which is dev SDA4 is our root partition. Dev SDA2 is our boot partition, so it's slash mount slash boot. Dev SDA5 is our home partition, so it's slash mount slash home. So if you ever need, say you screw up and you accidentally mount Dev SDA5 as tack mount, what you want to do is type U mount Dev SDA5 and it'll remove it, as you can see. So mount Dev SDA5 as home. And then there it is again. So now everything's all mounted. We want to do um, pack strap slash mount base and base develop. Um, if you have the E V E L, yeah. Okay, so if you have any intentions of using anything from the A U R, oop, knocked something over. If you have any intentions of using anything from the A U R, so like compiling your own packages and stuff like that, I suggest that you grab the base develop development package. You don't have to, but it's a suggestion nonetheless. Um, so we're gonna I'm gonna let this go and we're gonna grab one more file once I get back and we're gonna grab grub and then we'll get really into the meat and potatoes of this install. Alright, now that our base devel and base packages are downloaded and installed, we're gonna do one more and we're gonna grab grub. This is gonna be grub 2.0. Obviously this isn't gonna do legacy grub. Um I actually don't know if you can still get Legacy Grub. I assume that you can get it from the AUR, but I don't think Pac-Man itself actually carries it. But either or. So now that everything's all set up, we want to do uh, we want to generate our f-stab. So gen f-stab, if I can spell uh, slash mount uh, two greater than signs or waka waka Etsy slash mount Etsy F stab. Now we can check this and I'll go into more detail on about this too. So when you're in here this will be a good thing to explain for nano. In order to navigate around a nano you use the arrow keys in order to exit you press control X that gets you out of it. So within your F stab here you should not see dev SDA1 because dev SDA1 is reserved for grub. So it should not have a file system type. It shouldn't have anything at all in here. Um, so we want to make sure all of our file system types are right. So dev SDA4, obviously, dev SDA4, 2, and 5, we all format it to be extension 4. So therefore, it will be recognized. So our, the generate FSTAB program application, whatever you want to call it, itself will only put into the FSTAB folder what you have mounted. So since we don't have dev sda1 mounted at all it's not going to put it in here so if you actually do see it in here that means you accidentally mounted it and there, you screwed up along the way but that's the main reason why you want to check this is just so that you know everything actually makes sense so like dev sda4 root dev sda2 boot dev sda5 home you know these are all things and technically you can you know you can edit this string here in order to optimize it and yeah, I'm not really one to do that. So in order to leave nano you press control X. If you changed anything in the file, it'll ask you do you want to save it? You press Y and press enter and you leave. Nano's very simple. I almost question if people ever use Vi because whew, if you use can't use nano you're not gonna be able to use Vi. So now that uh, our fstab is generated, we're actually going to jump into the arch ch root environment. So arch ch root slash mount, and rather than doing it this way, we're gonna we're gonna do it this way. So we're gonna do slash bin slash bash. 
So, the previous way was that you just type rch root mount and it brings up shell and you type bash and just consolidate it all in one command. Now, if you at any time you need to leave the rch root environment, you just type exit. And then, in order to get back into it, you type rch root slash mount slash bin slash bash. There you go. All right, now we're going to do our whole locale gen thing. So we're going to do uh, nano, because I love nano so much, etsy, l-o-c-l-e dot gen. And obviously this depends on where you live. I still speak, I'm still speak in English and still have this incredibly thick American accent. So I'm going to go with the, the U.S. UTF um, and U.S. Uh, ISO. Press Control X to leave it. Press Y because changes were made. And it'll ask you where you want to write it. Obviously, you want to write the changes to the same file. So just press Enter. Now that we want to do this, we want to do our locale um, hyphen gen, which will then generate our locales for us. Um, okay, now we want to set up the for sim link for uh, the local time stuff. So um, we want to do. Yes, okay. I have programs running in the background on the other side, and it's just distracting. So, ln, tag sf, user, share, zone info, live in America. So, and now since I actually live in Minnesota, it's different. Um, the only place that's actually for reference for me is Chicago. So, and we're going to put that in Etsy local time. And now, of course, we want to actually put our host name in there. So nano slash sc host name. Uh, this you can make anything. You can make it a local host. You can make an arch. You can make it MDK. You can make a fuck nut. You, you know, you can make it anything you want to. So now uh, would be the time where we do the wonderful bootloader madness. So prepare yourself. It's horribly fearful. So before I do this, actually... um. The Arch Linux install guide for Grub is actually very helpful, uh, very informative. The only thing I don't care about it is that it talks about doing a Grub as a partitionless bootloader, and that will open a whole gigantic can of worms if you try to do it that way. So I suggest you do not do it that way. So, first of all, we want to do our Grub install. So, Grub install tech tech no tech floppy right, dev sda now if that comes up it's all good now all we have to do is generate the grub config file so now we need to generate the config file for grub to work it's actually very it, this is all autopilot it you actually shouldn't have to mess around with grub too much I mean, you can make some optimization changes but you really shouldn't even have to do that so we're gonna do grub make and make mk config tag o for an output file and that's gonna be slash boot if I get to boot right grub I'm on a roll today man and grub config and then that'll generate it for us and Guess what? We're actually done. We no longer actually have to do anything else, which is cool. So we just press exit and we reboot the system. Um, I'm going to get ready to remove the disk. And there you go. Grub, fully functional. And press enter. We didn't set a password. It would be good to set a password, but you don't really have to worry about that until the next go around. Root and you can do password and make it whatever you want. And there you go. So, tech you Now, um, oh yes, this this wonderful problem that happens. So, in the Arch ISO environment, we had um, we actually had internet. Now we don't. Uh, this is the wonderfulness about systemd. So, system control enable. DHCP CD dot service. Now I've actually been told you don't need the DHCP dot you don't need the dot service part. You just need to enable DHCP CD. 
I don't know. Um, if you just want to start it so that you have internet without rebooting, you just system control, system control, start DHCP and dot service. I'm just including the dot service. I don't know if you don't need it. I don't know if you do need it. I'm not sure. I know it works this way. By all means, tell me in the comments below how wrong I am. So if you, I don't know, ping Google, you should get a response. And then now we can... Yep, and there we go. So now you have a fully functional Archbox where you can download all your programs and applications off of Pac-Man and install your desktop environments and all that wonderful stuff. So this is pretty. That's pretty much it for the install guide. If you have any other problems, please, please do let me know. Um, I covered Nano. I covered Grub. I covered uh, partitions. So I think I, I addressed a lot of the problems people were having. There are some problems with uh, display managers and um, environments, desktop environments that people were having. And I will get to them in the future, just not right now. Um, I actually do plan on making a video about KDE and installing KDE. Because KDE, I don't know, I'm just not a fan of KDE, I guess. So, if you guys have any suggestions for videos in the future, please let me know in the comment section down below, or send me a PM on YouTube. I, even when I was taking that time off, I still, when I get on YouTube, I'd still try to help people out uh, to the best of my ability. But, I hope you guys had fun. Um, let me know in the comments um, if you think this, me this method is actually more efficient than using uh, system, uh, Syslinux. But, uh, that's it. Have a good one, guys. See you next time.